it's a kind of kaleidoscope of uh, music and uh, live visuals and animation. And we uh, take a journey, a whistle-stop tour of various monsters, um, some well-known, some not so well-known. There's spontaneity as well as kind of audience participation, so it's a bit of everything really. I am the vocalist involved in the project uh, Monster Music Improv. I play various instruments in the show and have designed various musical scenarios for different parts of the show. While music is playing around monsters, I'm also drawing pictures of the monsters and I'm visualising some of the weird and wonderful creatures that we see during the course of the show. In I've been involved in the show from the very, very beginning. Um, I, it was basically started with a conversation that I had with the former uh, director of IMC, Jerry Godley, who um, absolutely loves jazz and was really kind of wanting to bring his young daughter to music experiences that sort of reflect, reflected his own music aesthetic. So we had a conversation around that about, you know, how could we do some interesting jazz basically that would be accessible for families and children. For me, it was a really exciting opportunity uh, to develop content for young audiences. Uh, and as a, as a jazz promoter and concert promoter for improvised music, um, this was a perfect opportunity for us to engage with the ARC and develop content for an audience of future maestros. Both Lauren and Shane, the two musicians, would work largely um, in, in the contemporary jazz world. That's where um, both of them do most of their work and they both perform in various bands and are both very experimental and interested in pushing boundaries and um, when we first spoke to them we kind of felt they were they were really up for it they were up for the kind of adventure of it all um, you know what it would be like to play for a young audience. Children are completely entitled uh, to going to see really uh, good gigs of good quality and this kind of show and aims to do that so the children come away with having had an experience of a gig. It came together over a couple of sessions, a couple of key sessions that we had and then we developed it, we brought in uh, theatre director Louis Lovett for example, um, who sort of coached the performers who are, you know, who perform to uh, adult audiences all the time but this is a completely different set of circumstances so we needed to equip the the musicians with tools to engage with young minds and that's where you know the process organically developed from there really. Is it very like hard to improvise? For me improvisation is a lot of fun and anybody can improvise you know I mean we're improvising right now because we're having a, a conversation and I didn't know what you were going to say to me and you didn't know what I was going to say back to you right? What the ARC does and what the ARC does uniquely in my view is it finds a way to develop the practice of artists in order to really resource them and equip them so that they can perform for children. Okay, you tell me, you tell me what's the music noise. <laughs> It's a really nice opportunity to engage with the audience in a way that I, I don't usually. Um, I'm usually holding the microphone and my, my voice is my, my instrument. Um, but it's nice to be able to communicate verbally with the audience. There's a certain amount of acting. For me, you know, it's, it's new, so that was nice to have something else involved in it, you know, that they're kind of dealing more just directly with the audience that way. Still clicking? We're still clicking. A one, two, three, four. And it's nice that children can um, feel, hopefully, less inhibited 
or less rule bound so for instance there's a moment where we say look uh, where in your house might you find a monster and of course we get under your bed and we get uh, you know in the kitchen or in the cupboard and you know every so often someone will shout in the toilet and we're like yeah why not in the toilet where did you say under, so it could be monsters under your bed. Where else in your house might you find a monster? A lot of it is about how you frame things and how you're communicating the music to the children. You know, it's, sometimes it's simple things. They've been willing to look up at your audience and make them feel included. Say like drummers or guitarists or bass guitarists who might be used to be feeling like I'm kind of in the background and the singer is the one who's sort of leading the show. You know, they can unconsciously be not really looking at the audience. And for a child audience, that can be feel like you're kind of leaving them out of the experience. And really, they just really want to be included. So sometimes simple things like that can make a huge difference. Young, young people, by their very definition, are improvisers every day. Um, and as they get older, they improvise less and less as they conform. Um, and I think it's the perfect age to get them at their creative uh, best, or, or they're more open and most receptive. Well, They don't have the same barriers as adult audiences do, so they haven't decided that they don't like jazz or they don't like classical or they, don't, you know, they don't put those kind of genre boundaries on things. And they also don't really see a problem either kind of segueing between, say, music and cartoons. And in this instance, you know, live cartoons, illustrations. Um, the, the boundaries between art forms isn't an issue either. You know, they just they just take it in. Whatever you present them uh, with, they'll accept. They're also completely unforgiving as well. If they don't like something, they'll tell you. Or they'll make, maybe not tell you, they'll make it very clear. I think artists get a really honest and direct reaction from children. And sometimes performers really love that because often the rest of us are perhaps a little too polite in our responses or not, not indeed communicative enough back to the artists in turn. So I think, I think performing for children is certainly formative. We wanted to make sure that the music element wasn't dumbed down, that it still kind of retained the sort of experimental sophistication that both Shane and Lauren love to play with and love to perform with in their work that they do for adult audiences. And we really wanted to give it sort of that sort of musical integrity, I suppose. Children are completely entitled uh, to going to see really uh, good gigs of good quality. And this kind of show um, aims to do that. So the children come away with having had an experience of a gig. I think we needed to find a way to present it so that it wasn't completely boring. I mean, a lot of improvised music can be completely boring, even for adults. Uh, and I think the thing was to present it in a fun way and then allow there to be places in the, the performance for us to improvise and to, to stretch the music a little bit. And it's really nice to be travelling with people on the road. It, it's great that we're all together. Um, it feels like a little team that's going out there. And the show itself, I think, changes and evolves. And we try new things and make little changes that just make it a better show as it goes along. And I really hope we can get out on the road with it again because I think it's so much fun. His eyes are orange. <coughs> His tongue is black. <laughs> He's got purpley prickles all over his back. It's very important in an improvisational context to show that everything is being created live, is being uh, manipulated live, rather than it being some pre-recorded or pre-prepared item. Um, and that's really important that for this type of show, the audience get to see everything that happens. They see where it begins, they see where sound comes from, how it develops, how it changes. Um, 
that's the important part of improvisation. From a visual side, I think it's really great and fun and important that they get to see how the show is made. So they see the camera, they see me sitting at the desk, they see me drawing, they see me maybe with certain objects on sticks that become a very simple form of puppetry and they see it on the screen. And what I think is great about that is hopefully uh, the audience, children in the audience can look at it and go, OK, well, that's how that's done. And you know what? It's, it's not inconceivable I could do that myself. The reaction has been uh, fantastic. There's two, there's two parts to the reaction. Uh, the first part is the musician's reaction, how it changes for them over time, particularly across a tour such as this. Um, it really galvanizes the concept and it becomes organic. But for the audiences, that's the most rewarding thing, to see their interaction, the joy, uh, the imagination, uh, the creativity unleashed at every show, which is, which is specific for every show. Uh, that's the most rewarding part of this. I think what children take away from it is a curiosity and a confidence around the improvisational instinct. The, the show is, is aimed at uh, children who are around five years of age and for me that's, yeah, it's a very special age. Um, you know, they're fully formed individuals, yet they, they have this amazing imagination and creativity and, you know, it's as yet unfiltered um, and it's, it's, it's been wonderful to interact with that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. Can you give yourselves a big round of applause? Thank you for all your ideas and your noises.